Hey, I'm Daniel. You found my podcast, The Film Craziest Show. You're either watching on YouTube or you're listening on just to the regular audio. Um, but for this episode, I was joined by Dasha Nekrasova. I think the Russian pronunciation is Nekrasova. But I'm here to speak with her about her new film, The Scary of 61st. It blends horror and comedic elements. Um, it's about two roommates who move into a new Manhattan apartment. Uh, and they find out that it harbors a dark secret. The film releases on Friday, December 17th on video on demand and digital formats. Let's get right into the conversation with Dasha. Cool. Hey, Dasha, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Got to be talking with you about this scary on 61st. Had to double check the number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scary of 61st, actually. Thank you. The scary of yeah. 61st, sorry. <laughs> Now, no, uh, okay. I love to start just by asking, I ask this sometimes when it's not, doesn't seem like a traditional Christmas movie. So mm -hmm. you have uh, mannequins with Santa hats and you have jingle bells in the stores. So do you consider this a Christmas film? Yeah, in the way that Eyes Wide Shut is a Christmas film, you know, which was why I want, partly why I wanted, you know, to shoot it during Christmas and why I did make it so quickly um was because of the, the tradition of of christmas films in that vein though those mannequins wearing santa hats we shot when we did pickups in august because we shot the movie in january of 2020 and then in february everything locked down so when we did reshoots in august there were still mannequins with christmas hats on because of like the pandemic oh that must have been weird <laughs> yeah I mean, it was okay. all absurd, yeah. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> now, uh, I'd like to get into the technical aspects of the film. Can you just talk about uh, deciding to shoot this in 16 millimeter? Yeah, um, it was very important to me to make the film on 16, um, partly for, you know, aesthetic reasons. I really loved the way that it looked. I am not of the opinion that you can shoot something digitally and like put a filter on it to make it look like grainy, you know? Um, I really love working with the raw material. Um, also, you know, because the subject matter was so raw <laughs> um, and uh, textured and also so like hyper contemporary, I felt it would have been, it would have done the film a big disservice to work digitally um, and made it feel less tangible, more ephemeral. And then the third reason was just really, like I think alchemically shooting on film changes everything really. Um, so it was just, it, every part of the process was different because we were working with film in that. Um, we were able to get a really great uh, camera crew because there's so much enthusiasm I think for the medium amongst like cinematographers and aspiring cinematographers in my DP hunters and they did a, did a terrific job um but we had a great team all around yeah you you had mentioned eyes wide shut but were there any like big visual inspirations for the film mm, visually probably more like Polanski's apartment trilogy okay. um and then there were some more overt, like random visual references. Um, the scene where me and Noel go to see Greg at work and he's Windexing that window and the window sort of is the frame of the shot was something I saw in a movie called um, Comrades, A Love Story, um, a Chinese movie that I watched like on an airplane with Maggie Chung. Let me see who directed it. Um, I'll probably, Peter Chan. Um, it's a 1996 like Hong Kong film about a mainland guy who falls in love with a girl in Hong Kong played by Maggie Chung. Um, and there was a shot where she works at McDonald's and she's like Windexing basically the frame of the shot. So I wanted to replicate that. Um, I think De Palma, you know, was a big influence for Hunter and I um, as well, just in the approach like that scene where my character is throwing up and you see just sort of her legs like through the door frame. I think that that's a very like De Palma-esque shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, also what inspired you to get into the directing chair? 
Um, I don't know. I felt very called, I guess, to make this film. Um, I had, you know, vague directing aspirations because I had worked like as an actress on so many collaborative, low budget, like independent projects that I felt I knew my way maybe around a set or like had a sense that I that I knew sort of how to do it. Um, but with this project in particular, I don't know, I just really felt felt called to it, I guess. Okay. But what did you learn about yourself as a as a filmmaker with your first uh, directing project? I learned a lot. I mean, I learned that I I probably wouldn't act in something that I directed again. Um, okay. I really enjoy acting, but my I think my approach to both is kind of immersive, and there were definitely points where my acting suffered or my directing suffered. I think on scary. Um, so that's something I definitely wouldn't do again. Um, I think my strengths as a director come maybe from my background in acting. I think I have um, a decent intuitive understanding, for example, about like blocking um, just from having having worked. Um, yeah, I mean, my my process as a director is, I would say, is just very intuitive in general. <laughs> okay. And when, for your acting style, why do you describe it as immersive? Um, or process, I suppose. That's, I guess, I mean, I wouldn't call myself like a method actor, but I did study, the only, the only studying I've ever done of acting was like Strasbourg technique. So I, um, yeah, I don't have like, tricks really um to generate performance i sort of find that i have to uh summon or like manifest like effective states um or like effective memories to like perform and in the last act of my film where my character is basically like you know hysterical sure um it was really challenging to like be in that state and also like running a set you know okay fair enough now, uh, you and Madeline Quinn co-write the film. Was it always the plan for you guys to star in it? Yeah, yeah, because it was just the most straightforward way um, in the interest of time <laughs> and efficiency. Yeah, it was always meant to be sort of like a vehicle for us. Okay, and what was the, the co-writing process like? Uh, it was really fun. We started writing it on at an Equinox um, on 61st Street, actually. It was September. So we started writing on the roof of Equinox because um, it was sort of in between where we both lived. And then I started going, when it got colder, I started going to her place. Um, and we used a script writing software called Fade In that we could use collaboratively, but we worked a lot in the same, in the same room as well. Um, and sort of just broke out the story and then yeah did the did scene work a lot a lot of it I wrote um we wrote on our you know we sort of delegated tasks to one another okay okay now I'm trying to picture the conversation that took place between you two that actually inspired the film so can you talk a bit about that it's hard to kind of pinpoint I guess I mean we knew we wanted to do something we were both really obsessed with Epstein. It was basically all we talked about. So it's it like, it happened kind of organically. There wasn't, um, it was a short film originally. We were kind of like, we should do something. Um, we wanted, I guess, maybe a vehicle for us as actresses in a small way. And we thought the, there was a, there was a New York Film Festival shorts block called New York Shorts uh, that we thought we could make a film that was like New York centric and screen it there. So that was sort of our plan initially. Uh, and then the film kind of just got longer and more ambitious. Okay. So almost started out as a love letter to Manhattan in a way. But always Kubrick also, it was very early on the, um, the eyes wide shut angle was kind of the punchline of the film, even when it was short. Now, um, the research for this film must have been pretty fun. So can you talk about what went into deciding 
what kind of theories would go into the film? Yeah, uh, a lot of the research we had done prior, like we already knew. So we had an extensive kind of dossier on the Epstein stuff because we were so obsessed with it. So it really was just about selecting what was going to be the most legible visually. Hence the island, you know, I was really obsessed with that drone footage. The island then had that sundial, that really creepy like sun. Um, uh, and then when we started doing like research into like occult aspects, we found that tarot deck, um, which is a deck that belongs to some like kind of like post Crowleyist occultist order called the Builders of a Dynam. Um, and so I did research into them and found their deck and then they had a son that had these like naked little babies as well. So it seemed that seemed like it was a good fit for the film. Um, of course, the Prince Andrew stuff is also really important to the film, um, specifically that photo of him with Virginia Guthrie um, was something that I wanted really to like make reference to and create like a visual vocabulary around the Epstein stuff. Um, because I hate, you know, in films, the trope of like someone Googling something. So I wanted sure. to find a way of like telling this inform, like conveying this information visually without, um, yeah, an overt like Google search or something. I let you mention it very, very clever, not including Google. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd also love to ask just, um, it, Towards the beginning of the film, there's a great comedic moment where I think uh, Addie says that the, asks if the, the apartment will be cleaned and then the realtor goes like, don't you have a broom? And I think mm -hmm. it just sets up the comedy for the film really, really well. So can you just uh, talk about blending the comedic elements and the horror elements? Yeah. Um... That also came up, came pretty naturally to Maddie and me because we, you know, have been friends for a long time and have a very similar sensibility and like sense of humor. Um, we both really love this British film with Nail and I, as well as Ghost World, which are these kind of like buddy comedies that I think infused some of our scripting. Um, and yeah, Stephen Gurowitz plays the realtor and he's very naturally funny. And with that scene in particular, it was kind of like we needed him to say something that was like, that just felt like weird, <laughs> you know, like, cause that's what we were trying to establish in the first act of the film was like, well, something's wrong with this apartment. Something's wrong with this realtor. Um, and like, rather than an outright like refusal to clean it, to make this weird, like, um, digressive joke felt like it was would be satisfying yeah okay it really sets up the expectations for the film so that's awesome I think that was my time actually so I'd like to thank you Dasha for chatting with me about your film on the film craziest show and okay. it comes out this Friday December 17th uh yes in New York and oh, then around Christmas oh okay perfect okay awesome thank you cool I will thank stop the recording